Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man istanna bi sunnatihi bi ihsan ila yawmi din alhamdulillahi ladhi hadana li hadha wa makunna li nahtadi lawla an hadana Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh I would like to welcome you to another session from commentary in the 40 hadith of Ali Imam al-Nawawi's collection ala arba'un and we have made it alhamdulillah to hadith number 26 and Without any further ado, we will start the recitation of the hadith. An Abi Huraira da'an, qal qa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kullu salama min al-nasi alayhi sadaqatun, kulla yawmin tatlu'u fihi shams, ta'deelu bayna thnayni sadaqa, wa tu'inu rajula fi dabbatihi fatahmiluhu alayha aw tarfa'u lahu alayha mata'ahu sadaqa, wal kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqa, وَبِكُلِّ خَطْوَةٍ تَمْشِيهَا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ صَدَقَةٍ وَطُمِيطُ الْأَدَى عَنِ الطَّرِيكِ صَدَقَةٍ رواه البخاري ومسلم Abu Huraira Adi'an reported the Messenger Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said On every person's small bones there is a sadaqah every day the sun rises Doing justice between two people is sadaqah Assisting a man to mount his animal, lifting him onto it, or carrying his belongings onto it, it is a sadaqah. A good word is a sadaqah. Every step you take towards the prayer is a sadaqah. And removing harmful things from the path is a sadaqah. And this is relayed by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So this hadith, again, echoes the previous hadith. And it talks and reflects about the great creation of insan which has been emphasized in so many of the surah of the Quran Kareem. Ibn Rajab rahimullah said that the Prophet Muhammad mentioned sulama or the small bone or joint to emphasize the structure and creation of insan. This in and of itself is an indication of the great bounties and na'mah of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this hadith obliges us to be thankful to Allah by doing charitable actions or sadaqah with each and every single one of these bones. The topic of this hadith is synonymous with that of hadith number 25. There are several reasons why Imam Nawawi has or is inferred to have included this hadith in this collection despite it covering many similar topics. The most obvious reason is to emphasize the importance of sadaqah. Remember, if you recall, when we looked at Hadith Jibreel, which talked about or incorporated within it the five pillars. And the next Hadith, Hadith number three was, Bunyal Islam ala khams, the five pillars. So in that regard, the five pillars were echoed from the previous Hadith to emphasize the importance of the five pillars. Thus, this also is Hadith 26 emphasizes the importance of sadaqah in the life of a Muslim. Another reason also is that this hadith provides additional examples of sadaqah or charitable actions that we can do and we should do. A third reason perhaps also is the influence of Imam Muslim on Imam Nawawi. Okay, please note that Imam Nawawi, he wrote the most comprehensive shot or commentary on the collection of a hadith found in Sahih Muslim. Okay. And Imam Muslim recorded many a hadith on the topic of sadaqah. I mean, just like Ibn Hajar Asqalani, he wrote Fathul Bari, the most comprehensive shar on Sahih Bukhari. Imam An Nawawi followed him in this regard and did the shar on Sahih Muslim. Okay. So, as Muslims, from this hadith, we should try to do as many charitable actions as we can. And such sadaqah are not you know, observed in the same manner as the obligation of the fara'id, such as, for example, the salawat and the zakah and the psalm. However, at the same time, we should feel an urgency to do them and not be lackadaisical or apathetic. That's very important. So these two hadith greatly propel us not to 
belittle or think of these small good actions that can be included in sadaqah. Okay, we should try as much as possible to do whatever good we can, big or small. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He can reward us a great amount for even doing a small deed. For example, when we looked at uh, paraphrasing the hadith on this prostitute who fed a thirsty dog water, that was enough. That was enough. That sincerity and the amount of iman in that action that allowed this sinner to be forgiven. A lifetime worth of sins forgiven just for one action. So do not belittle a small action. Okay. Furthermore, we need these charitable actions to be the culture. Okay. And through this, it's goodness. The goodness of these charitable actions will increase and the evils around will reduce. So going forward in this hadith, some more lessons in ta'bir. Rasulullah says, shams." And this is a very strong statement because the Prophet ﷺ is saying almost in command phase that every joint on a person, there is a sadaqah do on it. Every day the sun rises. And looking at the first word that we're going to focus on is salama, which means small bone, or it can also be a joint. In another hadith, the exact number of small bones were enumerated. The Prophet says, Fibni Adama Situna wa Thalato Mi'ati Sulama, O Admin, O Mafsilin, Ala Kulli Wahidin fi Kulli Yomin, Sadaqa. كُلُّ قَلِمَةٍ طَيِّبَةٍ صَدَقَةٍ وَأَوْنُ الرَّجُلِ أَخَاهُ صَدَقَةٍ وَالشَّرْبُ مِنَ الْمَاءِ تَسْقِيهَا صَدَقَةٍ وَإِمَا تَطُّ الْأَدَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ صَدَقَةٍ In the children of Adam, there are 360 joints in each of them. O sadaqah every day. Every good word is a sadaqah. A man's helping his brother is a sadaqah. A drink of water which he gives is a sadaqah. Removing something harmful from the road is a sadaqah. And this is narrated by Ibn Abbas in Adab al-Mufrad and it's Sahih as per Shaykh al-Bani. So if you recall, Adab al-Mufrad is also a compilation by Imam Bukhari and it's a collection of adab or mannerisms, a beautiful collection as well which you should look into at some point in the future inshallah. So it is the interaction and structure of these bones that allows us the agility and speed that we possess on our feet and our maneuvering of our hands and joints. Okay. These are the same bones we use every day and often take for granted. These bones are among the key factors towards also the progress of civilization of insan, which has enabled him and enabled us to move, grasp, construct, and even build. And this ability to build and manufacture also due to these small bones, these salama, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. So we should... Be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these great ni'mah and should express that also by using these same joints in doing charitable actions. Another hadith narrated by Abu Dhar where the Prophet ﷺ says, In the morning, sadaqah is due from every bone in the body of every one of you. And to raqa, which one prays in the forenoon will suffice. And this is, Narrated in Sahih Muslim's collection. These two hadith echo this hadith number 26 in making sadaqah on every bone incumbent upon all of us. Okay, we have to use these joints which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us for sadaqah. And again, it can encompass a wide range of activities and good deeds and even things which we may not even consider good deeds. Even, for example, planting a plant. We talked about the hadith last time, even having permissible relations with our spouses, is a sadaqah. So many things are a sadaqah. Even a smile which takes a second to do, comes from a clean heart. This is often difficult for those who have a ounce of pride, but for the one who has a clean heart, it is pleasant to do. It is a sadaqah as well. So, so many different things. And this hadith builds on the previous hadith, hadith number 25, as we have discussed. So going forward and looking at this topic of shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Okay, according to Ibn Rajab, doing the sadaqah acts mentioned in this hadith is an obligation upon each and every Muslim. And this is why also this hadith is so important as well. Because it now makes these actions which we think are mubah obligatory now on a daily basis for us. So now there's an urgency for us to do it. As the introduction suggests, the implied reason or an implied reason for doing sadaqah is the blessing that Allah has bestowed on us so that we can use our joints and small bows to live well as we need to. And thus our response to this na'mah is to be able to use our joints and bones for gratitude and thankfulness in the form of sadaqah. Ibn Rajab classifies shukr to Allah into two categories. There is one, the obligatory shukr or thankfulness. And this is basically answered by us in fulfilling the wajibat, the obligatory actions and also refraining from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, such as the muharramat. And this is the minimal level of shukr to Allah that we should demonstrate. We need to refrain from ma'asiyah. We have to avoid misusing our jawari or limbs which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us and this is the minimal level of shukr. The mustahab or preferable shukr or thankfulness. Deeds or actions which are beneficial to the community as mentioned in the this hadith and the prior hadith. And it's automatic the one who is engaged in dhikr is also the person who is apt to do these small acts of kindness for others as well. Because he is close or she is close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he knows that to do beneficial things for others will also elevate them and make them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it works hand in hand. The dhikr which is also sadaqah in addition to the other sadaqah actions which benefit others. Going forward, the obligatory sadaqah. So it's important to look at these charitable actions from the perspective when they become obligatory. So in general sadaqah, we think of this as mustahab or preferred. But sometimes it can become incumbent upon us. For example, if a blind man is crossing the road and you are the only one present, helping him becomes obligatory. And furthermore, this may result in the whole Muslim community becoming or being blameworthy when a single Muslim fails to act in such a circumstance, with such a niggardly and apathetic attitude is really dangerous and we have to avoid that at all costs. Okay. We have to take the initiative. If we're the one around and we don't see anyone else, or even if we do, we should be first in line and try to rush to help because that's what we do. That's what Muslims do because we are people of sadaqah. We are people of sadaqah. And when we stop becoming people of sadaqah, then everyone else also will look at us in the negative stance. Okay. And unfortunately, this attitude of apathy and khajal is prevalent among the Muslims nowadays, everywhere. Okay. The Prophet wasallam says in a hadith narrated by Nu'man bin Bashir, he says, Sallallahu مَثَلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاهُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاطُفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسَدِ إِذَا اشْتَكَ مِنْهُ عُضْوٌ تَدَاعَ لَهُ سَائِرُ الْجَسَدِ بِالسَّحَرِ وَالْخُمَّةِ The Prophet said, and this is narrated by Numan bin Bashir in Sahih Muslim, he says, the similitude of believers in regard to mutual love, affection, and fellow feeling is that of one body. When any limb of it aches, the whole body aches because of sleeplessness and fever. This is in Sahih Muslim. But well, this is what happens when we see that another fellow believer has some issue, has some problem, is feeling some pain or difficulty. We also feel the same because we are connected, we are one body. Then the Prophet ﷺ continues in this hadith. He says, تَعْدِيلُ بَيْنَ اثْنَيْنِ صَدَقَةً وَتُعِينُ رَجُلَ فِي دَابَتِهِمْ فَتَحْمِلُهُ عَلَيْهَا أَوْ تَرْفَعُ لَهُ عَلَيْهَا مَتَاعَهُ صَدَقَةً وَالْكَلِمَةَ الطَّيِّبَةُ صَدَقَةً Doing justice between two people is sadaqah. Assisting a man to mount his animal, lifting onto it, or carrying his belongings is sadaqah. A good word is sadaqah. So again, the process of going further and giving more examples, more beautiful examples of what sadaqah represents or can represent. So this hadith emphasizes the importance of sadaqah in reconciling between two people and bringing about justice. Whether be spouses or family members or friends or any two from the Muslim community where there's harshness or there's some enmity. Reconciling is 
a great deed and it just restores the Muslim bond between families and community. Also furthermore, to get people who have deviated away from Islam or distorted back into the community is also part of Islah or reconciliation. It's also a very important sadaqah we must do because the majority of the Muslims are astray, like it or not. Okay? The majority of Muslims are not regular in their prayers. We have to get them back. We have to encourage them to come back to the masjid. We have to encourage them to come back to prayer. Join us for Ramadan. Help them. Overlook their minor deficiencies. Go look at the greater goal and not focus on the smaller issues they have, but the big issues. Okay? So it's very important that we encourage them in the best manners to get them back so that they can be part of the masjid once more or part of our community once more, those who have fallen astray and taking a detour from the sirap. Furthermore, this hadith mentions that helping a person with their needs or with difficulty is a sadaqah. So to just simply help someone carry a load to their car or into their home or help them with groceries up the steps, this simple act is a great sadaqah we need to do. Similarly, al-kalimatu tayyibatu sadaqah, when we notice that someone is unhappy, we can also try to remove their sadness, their despair, their despair by saying a good word, encouraging them, you know, telling them that just have a little more patience and Allah Subhanahu will give them such a great reward. And also try to be at their side for any type of help they may need, to be an emotional support. And just knowing that there's someone who is in support of them, the morale is very huge because unfortunately depression is very common in today's age and time, everywhere particularly in the States. Another way is likewise giving nasiha or sincere advice and guiding people from the sacred knowledge. We should try to be also an example to others also so to follow in so that people can also follow or emulate what we are following from the Sunnah and the Quran. So our words will be much more effective when we are the example of what we are preaching. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, Continuing the hadith, وَبِكُلِّ خَطْوَةٍ تَمْشِيهَا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ صَدَقًا And so every step that is taken towards the masjid, towards the salah, is a sadaqah. Other actions which contribute to fulfilling an obligations can be extra rewards for the believer. Furthermore, the last charitable act mentioned in this hadith is, وَطَمِيتُ الْأَدَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ صَدَقًا and even the act, the simple act of removing a harmful thing from the road or someone's pathway is a sadaqah. So what this hadith tells us also, this last part of the hadith, it tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks upon even this seemingly insignificant action as noble. And by doing such an action and such actions, we may prevent harm. For example, it could prevent someone from falling or tripping. So it also provides a great purpose in society even though as insignificant as it may seem. And we should be that person. We should humiliate ourselves. Sometimes it's good to depress your ego. It is a good thing. As much as possible, we need to be humble because to get rid of anything of kibber or any ego within us, it's good to do these small actions, to humble ourselves, to serve others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't know how much He is going to put in terms of our scale for these type of small actions. Even though it may appear to the average Abdullah or Fatima as insignificant or to the Joe or Jane in our society. And it also it's a great da'wah for others as well because there are those who have never seen or interacted with a Muslim. And those who know a Muslim obviously have a better perception of Islam because in general, Islam teaches good. It does not teach anything which is evil. And whatever, big or small, from our actions is seen and perceived by others. They can experience the interaction of a Muslim. And they'll see, they'll recognize. Anyone who has sincerity, they'll know, they'll recognize that this person is not an evil person. So in conclusion, highlights from this hadith. Islam calls for and encourages its followers to build a society where there is support, help, and caring for one another. Okay. The socially charitable actions which have been discussed here and also in hadith number 25, 
Go forth in forming a culture of generosity and righteousness. Furthermore, the society is mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his many bounties. Furthermore, the concept of sadaqah needs to be promoted in our schools, our masajid, in our homes. Unfortunately, the media plays a negative role in this sense. I mean, we have movies which promote negative values, which lead to an uncaring society, resulting in selfishness, greediness, and egocentric personalities. And one way we can change that is to infuse these beautiful values of sadaqah, goodness and ideals into the modern culture that we live in. Okay. Furthermore, you know, we also have psychological approaches in promoting generosity and moral values, which also need to be infused as well. Okay. So putting everything together, these two hadith which we have looked at, this hadith, along with his predecessor, is a strong encouragement for all of us to perform sadaqah daily. This sadaqah is done as a result of our gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the bounties that He has provided us daily and that we are able to use our bones and joints for our everyday lives and for our pleasure and to do what we do. Okay, so with this inshallah, we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq from all these beautiful gems and may Allah allow us to put this hadith into practice. Subhanaka lahu hamdik wa nashadu wa la ila illa ant wa sakfaratubu ilayka assalamu alaykum. ورحمة الله وبركاته